Welcome to The Unmusking Show, everyone. It's the show where I talk about Earth's problems and offer absolutely no solutions. I mean, why bother when we're all going to be colonizing Mars by 2029, am I right? I'm Elon Musk, a 52-year-old man who wakes up at 7 a.m., loves a good read, and drinks about two cups of coffee or cola a day. So it's no surprise if you know a lot about me. But guess what? I might just know a thing or two about you too. Yep, I'm aware of your grocery preferences, your favorite stores, um, even your commute. I know which websites you frequent and how much time you spend on cat videos. And not just cats, mind you. I'm quite the keeper of secrets. Well, at least until the next data breach. And today let's delve into the wonderful world of big data, anonymized user data that is stored in the cloud. On one hand, data privacy is the talk of the town, right up there with saving the planet and smashing the patriarchy. But let's be real, we've all hit that pesky allow cookies button and don't even get me started on mindlessly clicking accept all after slogging through another epic novel of terms and conditions just to join the latest social network. No wonder our news feeds are a constant parade of data breaches and tech disasters. But potential security breaches is but one of many dangers. Another is using collected data for purposes completely different from those for which they were collected. We hear about spying on users almost every day now. Both commercial companies and governments have turned into nosy neighbors peeking through our digital curtains. Meanwhile, Mozilla has cut ties with Onorep, uh, a company supposedly in the business of scrubbing your digital traces from the internet, all because they found out the CEO had some shady connections with data broker websites. It's like hiring a security guard at a car dealership who moonlights as a parts dealer on the black market. Anonymized data is like the oil wells of the digital era. While in the realm of oil, we've got OPEC calling the shots. In cyberspace, it's more like a game of internet whack-a-mole. And hey, don't even think about clicking away from this video. I'll get to the bottom of this. Ah, the 90s, when the internet was like the Wild West for info seekers. Data streams ran wild, like cowboys at a rodeo, with no sheriff in sight. Enter the opportunistic companies, planting their flags in the digital frontier. Fast forward to the present, and companies like Google, um, Meta, Apple, and Tencent know not only what breed every dog on the internet is, they're practically the dog whisperers of the internet. They know their favorite snack, fur color, and who's been wagging tails with who you, in the digital dog park. And so, the million dollar question, why? Well, it's the same answer as with oil. Data collection is easily converted into cold, hard cash. You see, the same data set can be used for sociology or marketing research, teaching AI and machine learning systems, fine tuning ads, and, well, it can even be sold to third parties. And, what does all this data alchemy yield in the end? You guessed it, money. Now, when it comes to collecting information, different companies have their own unique flavors, all influenced by the political spices of their respective countries. The USA and China are polar opposites in this, and many other ways. In the land of the free market loving USA, economics should be absolutely free from politics. Who reaps the juicy benefits of big data collection? The corporate bigwigs, of course. You see, a company's position in the market often hinges on its privacy policies. Makes sense, right? If you're a guy who's crazy about Star Wars, <laughs> advertisers will be all over you like Ewoks on Endor, pushing theme park tickets where you can channel the force with a lightsaber, uh, rather than bombarding you with ads for hairspray and dog food. And there's still no federal regulation on the whole personal data gig here in the US. It's like a patchwork quilt sewn by your grandma taking pieces from 15 different states. But here's the kicker. Laws in places like California and Virginia seem to lean towards big tech's interests. Ah, uh, the sweet sound of lobby dollars at work. So when regulators come knocking on the doors of tech giants in the US, they try to slip out of their collars. Nope. No one home. Now let's explore the other side of the globe, China. Over there, things take a different turn. Civil society in China isn't quite as independent from the state. So who's keen on collecting data? You guessed it, the government. 
China's government has managed to strike a new social contract with its citizens. They hand over their data in exchange for what's promised to be more efficient management, ideally making life safer and simpler. But of course, there's a catch tucked away in the details. Having all that data gives the government more control and influence. Let's talk about WeChat, the all-in-one app that lets you chat with friends, share your location, order food, grab movie tickets, and so much more. Here's the thing. The CIA reportedly found out that Tencent, the Chinese tech giant behind WeChat, received some financial backing from China's Ministry of State Security in its early days. Interesting startup funding, don't you think? According to the conversation, WeChat provides important services for the Chinese government. But here's the catch. The app undergoes censorship and careful monitoring as directed by officials in Beijing. It's like Big Brother making use of big data. Quite the ironic twist, isn't it? So let's chat about the rest of the world. Stuck between China's data grip and the USA's anything goes attitude. Some countries tilt towards tighter government control while others let corporations take the lead. Take the EU, for instance, with its GDPR, the General Data Protection Regulation. It's like they're playing a balancing act. You're trying to rein in both corporations and themselves when it comes to user data. Then there's Russia tweaking its personal data law while diving into digitizing personal info. If you're an economically active Russian citizen, chances are you've shared your data with the state a couple dozen times in a given year. Behind all this lies an interesting point. It's less about whether to share data and more about who ends up with it and what they do with it. If you've been surfing the web since the 90s, your data's probably out there somewhere. This is the wide world of web. The real question is who's got their hands on it? Oh, and by the way, I'm cooking up plans to make X the next big everything app like WeChat. Maybe that's why Mr. Xi Jinping hasn't made a guest appearance on our show since the first season. You see, it's a wild world out there in the race to know more about you. Thankfully, our trusty guest is always ready to answer questions, just like any journalist whose job is to ask them. Tucker, can you hear me? Hey, Elon, did you call me to maintain the illusion that your companies don't collect users' personal data? It's no secret. By the way, you sent such a good resume to the CIA. Too bad they didn't hire you. And there you have it, dear viewers. Every tech giant knows everything about you. For modern users, there are two traditional dilemmas. The first is the choice between privacy and convenience. We're talking about targeted advertising. That's why I don't get ads to buy a new Tesla. Exactly. Targeting is the cornerstone of conversion, the catalyst for the KPI of any company in the market. It's what companies need, and it's convenient for users themselves. If you live in a world where there's only soda on sale and mattress blowouts, why not play along with you? I don't see anything criminal in ad targeting. And there isn't. Oh, right. I remembered about the dozens of data leaks, but there's a second, even more powerful idea. Security, access to personal data, chat messages. It's a way to catch terrorists, prevent suicides, solve crimes, and so on. So what's the catch? There isn't one, as long as you believe those who say they pursue these goals. But after watching X-Files, I don't really trust anyone. People share your point of view. With the recent iOS update, only 4% of iPhone users in the US allowed Apple to use their personal data for commercial purposes. It's surprising companies still bother asking them. Privacy is still an important topic for any company. I respect the wishes of my users. Why didn't you ask where I am today? I can see the GPS tracker in your Tesla. Sorry. To collect or not to collect data, that's not even a question anymore. Uh, the internet knows everything. In a way, the internet knows more about you than you do yourself. What were you doing exactly three years ago? I don't know. Where were you? What track were you listening to at noon? And what path were you taking? Some apps can easily give you the answer. The real question is, where do you stand between full data transparency and privacy? On one hand, it's not very pleasant to live in a world where even when taking nudes for yourself, you still choose a pose that's more flattering, just in case the government surveillance employee might like the photo. What? You don't take photos for yourselves? Oh, come on, I've seen them. 
On the other hand, we've seen how quickly complete anonymity leads to crime. For instance, the anonymous browser Tor quickly became the calling card of the darknet. I won't even begin to tell you what you can find there. In the end, big data is just a tool, just like the internet as a whole. Yeah, yeah, in the 20th century, the internet brought us freedom and the use of big data made surfing more convenient and safer. And to this day, the potential of big data is far from exhausted. By collecting anonymized data, companies can provide more convenient services and governments can become increasingly digital. No queues, less red tape, and fewer human errors. As Nathan Rothschild famously said, who owns the information, he owns the world. And if in 1815 he meant news for making money off the stock market, today it's big data that's the most crucially appropriated resource. The closer you let corporations get to you, the more leverage you give them to control your behavior. I'll take that. It's known that human willpower is a finite resource, and the tighter your own information bubble becomes, the more individually tailored it is. The more your behavior ends up in the hands of others. Now, they can shape both your commercial and political behavior in ways you might not even notice. How do you fight against this? It starts with awareness and self-control. As watching this episode is already a great first step. But what if you want to completely isolate yourself from this sinister web that collects every piece of information about you? Move to Mars. Uh, to all the settlers on the red planet, I promise absolute anonymity. When I become the owner of the only means of travel to Mars, and therefore the sole provider of local internet, I guarantee you complete data security. A secret ceases to be a secret when two know it. But you can trust me. It's me, Elon. Get ready for 2029 and see you on the red planet.